Hello and welcome to this video presentation. My name is Paul Brett. I am a senior software support analyst supporting the IBM Transformation Extender product. Today's topic is using the ITX Java class adapter. Feel free to follow me on Twitter at Paul Brett IBM. Here you can see I have the Transformation Extender 1003 Design Studio open and ready. I'm going to start by creating a couple of projects. The first of those two projects is going to be a Java project. So I click Next, I give the project a name, I'm just going to call this Source for the moment. And I'm going to tick the option to use the project folder as the root for the source and the class files. OK, now I have a Source Java project switch back to the Transformation Extender development uh, perspective for the moment and create the second of my two projects which is going to be an extender project. I shall call this one Java class. Okay I have my two projects. I'm going to run a little script now that will um, copy a couple of files in that I need. Okay and in the source project if I refresh you will note that I now have two Java files, one called Hello World and the second called Log Version. Let's switch to the Java development perspective for the moment and have a quick look at these two Java uh, pieces of code. The most simple one of course is the Hello World example. Uh, it doesn't do very much except return Hello World to um, the calling method. The second one, Log Version, a little bit more complicated. Uh, the main method is actually down at the bottom of the file here which calls the do append method and then within there it opens up a file in a specific hard-coded directory. Um, it will write a couple of static lines at the beginning and end of its job but in the middle it will write out a date time string and the current Java version. Now obviously this particular log file is not very useful but it gives you an example of what you can do with a Java class um, and uh, show how that executes when run from the map. So I think just by opening these um, they've been compiled but I will save them both anyway just in case and then I will check in the actual directory to ensure that we have two class files now. We do. Okay so those have just been compiled um, by the integrated development environment that is uh, Eclipse. So those have been compiled for me. Next thing I need to do is get those into a jar file. Okay, so if we right click on source and choose export and go for jar file, what we want to export, we'll untick that, is only the entries under default package. I'm going to write them to a file called javaclass.jar and I pretty much don't have to change any of the uh, settings on this or any of the next screens, I can just click finish. If we have a, look, a quick look in my workspace, um, you will note that I now have Java class.jar in there and the date and timestamp shows it it was just created. Okay, so if I go into my extender project, uh, switch to the transformation extender development perspective for the moment, and I try to import a type tree from the Java class. I type in the name of one of my classes and we type in H-E-L-L-O-W-O -O. and as you can see as I'm typing um, up the top it's telling me that there's a class not found exception and even when I complete the complete name of the class and now it should find it it's still saying that it's not been found. Okay the reason for this is I need to temporarily close the design studio. I need to edit uh, the dtx.ini file that comes with the product and make a quick change in the external jar files section. I'm going to add in a line here that says jar1 equals and then a hard coded path to my workspace and then the java class.jar file that I created in the previous step. If I now save that and rerun my design studio Back in my Java class project, I can rerun the import process again, uh, Java class, and you will see that as I type in hello world, 
it's still got that red warning on there right up until I press the letter D and complete a name that it does recognize. So it is now reading that hello world out of that jar file and it's saying yes this is a class I know about I will be able to create a type tree for you from this. So let's go ahead and click next. Uh, on this page we click next and next and next and on here I'm just going to tick the main uh, top method there hello world it's ticked the um, one underneath for me so I click next in the Java class project I want to call this hello world.mtt and there we go that is the type tree created successfully while we're here and before we build the maps let's import the second one it's much the same process uh, right click import Java class this time we're going to type in log verge as you see it's got a red warning at the top but as I complete the name with the N for log version it's now gone because it recognizes that as one of the classes within the jar file that I have referenced in the dtx.ini file we'll whip through this next 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 on this page we have two methods that we can choose there's the main method and then there's the do append that's inside it we want to actually reference the main here so I'm going to go ahead and click next I'm going to tell it to do the top level and it's not automatically tick the next level for me and that's fine I'll just leave that as is um, click next we're going to put it in the Java class project and we're going to call it no surprises log version okay so now we have two type trees as well as the type tree that I bought in with my script earlier generic it's just a skeleton type tree that I can use in um, in my map that I'm now going to create so next step let's create the map file so we right click we choose new map source I'm going to call this um, example.mms and then within example.mms I'm going to create a new map and I'm going to call this test1 actually no I'm not I'm going to call it hello world so it's obvious which one's doing which okay on the output side I'm going to create a new output card I'm going to call this prep Java call I could call it anything I like but that's what this card is going to do it's going to prepare the Java call I'm going to choose the hello world type tree and then from within that uh, from the object picker I'm going to choose the hello world item it's a sub item of Java class on the output file I'm going to put this information into a file called prep.txt we don't actually use this information but it's handy just to have a look at it um, just to see what it looks like when this map is done okay so that's preparing the call let's expand all the possible places we could put rules in here I'm going to put equals and then a unique string in here to identify the instance of the um, Java instantiation of this particular method I can put anything I like but I'm going to put ID one and then in the other fields I'm just going to put insert none because none of these um, need any strings to be put into them the hello world example will run without any input at, at all okay so let's um, save and build this map the map is finished and a file has been created called prep.txt we'll have a quick look at that it's uh, XML like in structure doesn't really have a lot of useful information in it um, other than the fact that the um, Java call that's going to be made is embedded within there so it knows it's going to be calling the hello world um, uh, class and uh, from within that the um, the main the main uh, method so let's actually get the map to do the Java call next we need a new output card I'm going to call this um, exec Java call I'm going to use my skeleton type tree that I imported earlier it's um, nothing special um, and I, within there I'm just going to use the text item and we'll result, write the result into a file called result.txt okay so what does my Java call need to do uh, we need to um, get from the Java class adapter um, this is all the connection string information I'm only going to turn on adapter tracing and finally the information that we need to send into the call which is the previous card 
I'm going to wrap that in a package statement, prep Java call, and that is the rule complete. So we save, um, save, build, and run our map. The map has completed successfully. And over in the miscellaneous area, you will note that we've now got a Java trace.log and we've got a result.txt, which in theory contains hello world, which it does. Now it's important to note that this string, let's just erase it and save the file for a moment. This string, hello world, is not coming from my map. Hello world does not appear anywhere in my map whatsoever. Um, that string is coming from the Java code itself. Um, so if I just run that one more time, map completed successfully, there we go, hello world, back into the file. Okay, let's move on to the more complicated example. Um, this example is in fact so similar to my main example that I am just going to copy the whole map and just make some small changes. So I'm going to call the map um, log version. Now log version has two cards on output, um, as did the previous one, obviously having made a copy of it. Card two can stay exactly the same. We're just going to get call the Java adapter and package the previous card. So it's the previous card that needs changing. Let's close this result file for a minute, give us some more room, and drag that over and expand all of these. Now you can see the basic structure of this type tree that was the hello world example. Let's change this now to the log version example. So we call the log version type tree. We call the log version object from the root. Um, the file name can stay the same. Uh, let's click no here. Okay, I'm gonna expand all these again. And you'll note that the structure is very similar. And as a result, many of the rules on my previous uh, design have gone into exactly the same places. So this, um, I've got equals ID one again, um, that's absolutely required. That's gone in, in, in the right place and I don't have to do that one again. Um, this particular method has a null arg list again and we can put null uh, none in there and that's fine. But the third rule um, was in a place that it doesn't recognize now and the equals none um, has become an unresolved rule and we've got an empty rule cell to fill. Now the rule's gonna be the same, so I'm just gonna drag and drop that, and that's it, that's my map done. I've changed the type tree, and it's the type tree that determines which Java class is being called. My Java class has no inputs, so I don't need to change anything else. I can just save, build, and run this map. Before I do that though, let's just go into the, um, into the uh, directory here. Oops, wrong one. Uh, and bring up that in the file explorer and then sort those by date view. You will note that the Java trace is the most recent file produced. We have prep, we have result. Okay, the important thing to know is we have no files there that end with dot out. Um, if you remember in the log version code, this is the name of the file that we will be produced um, in this directory when that particular Java class is called. So we're going to do that now. Um, we're going to save, build and run map has completed successfully. Back in the file explorer view, you can see that the Java trace was updated, as was prep and result, but I've got a, now a fourth output file called writing to file.out. And if we open that up in Notepad, um, uh, let's, uh, do, 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 do. let's just open it up in Ultra Edit. Um, you will note that the uh, four blocks of lines that the Java code produces um, have been written into the file. And indeed, they will be written into the file every time this map is run. So we can run, 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 and back to the text file, uh, say yes to see the updates, and you'll see there's another three blocks written there. Um, not very useful, as I say, but um, you can get your Java classes to do anything that you can do in Java, and this is the way to um, import the type tree and call them from your maps. That's it. Thank you very much for watching. I want to thank you for taking the time to watch my video presentation today. If you found the content interesting and informative, please hit that like button. Subscribe to my YouTube channel as I release content like this on a regular basis. Reach out to me on Twitter at Paul Brett IBM. Thank you.